Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we have with us Abe Menkel from Lechnam Incorporated. What a mouthful, Lechnam. Lechnam. Tell me a little bit more about the name, how it got started and why it got started. It was kind of a joke at the beginning, some time ago, and I kind of started getting my hands into this type of work. But I have a relative out west that... Um, as a business and he named it after his son but he reversed his son's name so it's called remus but his son's name is samir yeah. so i figured it's kind of clever but it's easy it's simple to remember you know what i mean so i reversed my last name which is mancal so mancal backwards is lachnam yeah it just kind of rolls off the tongue or is that because like arabic and english sort of Back to back. One, yeah, one I guess way. that could work that way. Yeah, it works reading it backwards. You know, it's funny to say that. I got a friend actually that is able to write both Arabic and English both at the same time. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's insane. Left and right. Yeah, so yeah. let's dig into it a little bit. I just want to know what got you into general contractor sure. and when did that start? How long ago? Why? It started quite, uh, quite some time ago, actually, if I want to try to trace it back to, you know, my interest in it as a child actually i used to watch like these renovation tv shows there's a show called home time uh, i remember in bob vila i don't know if you remember that oh name. yeah yeah you remember bob vila. Dude, I'm you're old. dating yourself bro. yeah i know i know dating so, yourself here. I, it, well it's that's truth hurts sometimes but uh so i used to watch these shows when i was you know five six seven uh, my family still calls me as a nickname, Home Time, till this day. So it's 35 years later. And yeah, I home time. yeah, I used to watch that show all like religiously. I used to ask, you know, like for my birthdays and stuff like that. I remember a toy called the uh, 4 in 1 Master Workshop. You know, wow. When I was seven or eight and I begged for it for like a year. And, you know, my family were generous enough to get it for me, even though we didn't have too, too much. But so I've always been interested, you know, I used to, when my dad would be working outside around the house, I'd be, you know attached to his side and helping him on the car around the house fixing things so it was definitely something that that came from a younger age as I grew up I mean I didn't shy away from it but uh, it wasn't as common probably a little bit further into my teens you know we started doing stuff around the house you finish the basement build the deck I mean we didn't know what we we're doing but we did it anyways to try right you don't know until you try you don't learn until you try right? mm -hmm. so and then coming out of high school I really I really didn't think too much of it I didn't uh I didn't expect that this would be something that would be, you know, a future career. So I didn't focus on it too much, which was probably a, a mistake in my past. And uh, something I, I recommend, you know, like uh, parents and stuff, if they see their kids um, show interest in this kind of thing to have them start at an early age, you know, and, and yeah, trade, yeah. Right? not waste their life in something they may not like and then come back to it later. And that's but, the thing, like some of us are meant to be, you know what, like this is how my brain works. It's exactly. a little bit more hands-on. I do want to kind of get my hands dirty and I want to yeah. do things a certain way. Yeah. And some of us are lucky enough. Like I've noticed this with my brother, actually. It was to the point where two of my brother, my brother and I, like Sammy and myself, were arguing with my dad on the fact that Osama shouldn't be going to school. He should be going into trades. Right. Like that's just his thing. He's you can see it. Been yeah. around as a mechanic. He's been around cars since he was like twelve, maybe sure. thirteen. He's always wanted to get his hands dirty. My first car, he screwed up a, a bunch of things on it. Yeah. So like that to me, that makes absolute sense. It's it's definitely yeah. It's very important. You know, my parents they you know they tried their best, but they don't know. Like parents don't know exactly what your your children are interested interested in unless. The children actually tell you, yeah. right? Their kids tell you what, you know, I want to be this or I want to be that. And I really didn't have an inkling towards something specific. Even though I had that kind of background and I wanted to, you know, I enjoyed doing that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I went to school and I took, at the time, high tech was booming. You know, I went to IT for schooling. And then, you know, my last semester before I finished, you know, everything crashed, Nortel, all that stuff went down. Like I came out of college with no work right the, the market was dead so you know you work the odds and ends eventually got into medical software medical records software uh, as a job or a career and i ended up being with that company for about uh, 14, 14 or 15 years oh wow yeah up until this past march so throughout that time probably since i'd say 2012 uh, 2013 i slowly started to do you know a few projects here and there and i you know i started to 
realize it's something I do still enjoy. I was actually living out, out in Calgary when I first started with this company. So when I came back, I was able to have some support from family and stuff to do these these types of things. But And as it kind of grew further throughout the, the last maybe, I want to say seven or eight years, I, I started to look into doing flips. I did my first flip in 2017 while I was working for the software company. So I was doing after hours, weekends. So we're, and we, I just got to go back sure. a little bit. So you were you're in Calgary up until what year? Oh, nine to 12. And then when you moved, you were still working for the software company? Same, yeah, same company. Yeah. So sense. I started there for the first three years and then I moved here and finished the last 12 years uh, with the company. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a long stretch. It was a career and it was really, uh, it was a... We almost got you for life. Yeah, almost. almost, almost. But I needed a change and um, and we both kind of came to that agreement that, um, you know, the company was moving in a, in a specific direction and, um, and I needed a change. So we worked out a early retirement, if you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, so, nice. Yeah, it was nice to, uh, you know, uh, part ways on a good note and uh, have the opportunity to finally step away Always, and look at other options. Always. I like how you said part on way on a good note. Like it, yeah. it's always a, there's something to be said about how people leave. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really want to know what somebody is made of, see how they leave. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that quote before, yeah. but it, it, it always rings true in my head. It's like, if you're going to leave somebody, better, leave them better than you found them. Cause you never know. Exactly. You never know. A hundred percent. So first flip in 2017, tell yeah. me all about that i want to know the good the bad the ugly yeah. the truth it was interesting for sure it it was a lot of work so first time i've ever taken on something like this i bought a you know a really old house in barhaven tiny three bedroom house on a really nice lot uh, nice luckily the but, cookie uh, cutter barhaven homes man. Yeah. those are like the bread and butter i know that it's my favorite part of barhaven i grew up in barhaven actually since we moved there since i was uh, five or six years old so the last 35 36 years of my life i've been in barhaven yeah and for folks that are watching, we're talking about Barhaven, old Barhaven, old bar you right, know, yeah. like around Larkin, yeah. around that kind of area. That's exactly it. Larkin is where I, I did my first flip. And if oh, you ever drive down Larkin, I, I, could, I could have guessed it yeah. like that. You could, you'll see the house, the first house I flipped that sticks out like a sore thumb because it's nice. a modern house in, the, in between old houses. So, yeah, it it was, uh, you know, I was living in Canada. I had bought my first house in Canada just before that. And uh, I sold that house and I started looking for something closer into Barhaven because that's where all my family lives. So it's just easier. And I ended up finding this house and uh, it basically was a full gut. Uh, you know, there was nothing really to keep. Um, so we really just kept the walls, like the framing and everything else was gone. The roof, everything like you could see through from the front of the street to the backyard. You can see right through the house. Um, it's, it was, um, it was a huge learning curve and, and something that, you know, I didn't expect to, take on like that that size of a job and what I thought I was going to do compared to what it ended up being but it's it's also a huge financial burden you know so that was one of the pain points is is making sure you have enough finances because you hear a lot about you know people who start a project get halfway through and then yeah, they run yeah. out of money and then there's stuck nothing right? worth then like the absolute worst is getting into a project when yeah. it comes to a flip <clears throat> absolutely with a certain budget and say yeah this should be no should problem be okay, yeah. and then you find like Halfway through, you've already blown the budget completely, 100%. and you're still about not even fifty percent of the way done. Hundred percent, yeah, that happens. It happens often, and I get a lot of those sales actually sometimes where yeah. like they're just we can't finish it. We're gonna have to sell it as is. Exactly. And the problem is, it's actually it's worse, unfortunately, because you try to sell it like you're not gonna sell it as a finished product. Nobody who was looking to live in a home is gonna buy it. Exactly. Very rare. You're gonna so get you're looking it. at somebody else that's probably just going to be another flipper yeah. or another general contractor or what have you. And the chances are they're going to probably want to buy it for a steal. Steal it. So all that money that you spent, if you budgeted a hundred thousand and it's, it's gone, gone in there, yeah. well, yeah, you try to break even. I guess. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, luckily I had, I uh, mean, you know, my family are great support. My parents, my brothers. So were you living out of the house as well too? I wasn't. I actually, I, I moved back to my parents' house, you know, uh, not ashamed to say it, but you know, I was in my thirties and it was a temporary thing. And I knew that and, and it needed to be that way. Cause you know, financially to be able to do this project, you know, it didn't make sense to go rent and stuff. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, no, my, my parents were, were amazing throughout the whole process, you know, financially and support. And, you know, my mom, you know, Lebanese moms, right? They are Arabic moms. Did you eat yet? I no. ate, I eat ate yet? breakfast, no? lunch, and dinner tw <laughs> twice a day, right? You know, so, no, I was, I was very, uh, very lucky to have their support. My brothers and, and brother-in-law, who also works in construction, uh, were, were an amazing help. But went through the project, you know, you, you definitely go over budget. There's no doubt about that. Um, as especially you find like things, yeah. in your situation to correct me if I'm wrong, especially when you're hoping and planning to live in it too, yeah. right? Like you're not going to just half ass it. Yeah. It's got to be done to a certain standard. Exactly. So. Exactly. And the, my, one of my problems, I know we're talking about sort of ADHD and being a little bit OCD earlier, but even if it's not for me, I have a problem of just slapping it together. I, it doesn't feel right when I'm doing, it. you know, I go to a project, I just did a, a flip recently and the people who owned it before slapped it together to make it look nice. It looks pretty just to sell it. But then if you want to come and make minor changes, you know, you you find all the ugly underneath. Mm -hmm. It's so much extra work. So, but uh, yeah, no, the project was amazing. You know, I went, uh, I went way further than I expected, but it turned out great. Uh, you know, huge addition, garage, double garage addition with a master bedroom above and uh, full, full gut basement to second floor roof landscaping you know and uh, and then i ended up living there for about a year a year and a half and then sold it because i i felt that confidence uh, the market was just starting to come up at that time in about 2019 and the house you know value was was uh, really good for you know the position i was in you know what i bought it for versus what i put it in, put into it uh, and then what it was worth and i thought well if i could do this once i could do it again yeah and sure enough, that's what happened. I sold it in June of 2019, and I bought my next one in August, right up the road on Larkin, another one, um, and started all over again. And um, that's kind of how it picked up, basically, from from that point on. So I did a few more flips after that uh, in Barhaven, a bunch of projects, you know, basements, kitchens, bathrooms, you know, for friends and family. I really, uh, it's mostly friends and family, I find. I haven't gone too far out of that circle. Yeah. And that's, that's normally how it starts, but I'm, I'm just, again, because it, that's two properties on Larkin. I'm curious, why didn't you call it Larkin or well, the organization? The organization. It makes sense <laughs> calling it your name backwards. Close enough. Yeah. Close enough. I guess, I guess I could have. Very yeah. close. Yeah. Very they're close. pretty close to spelling it. So family and friends has been kind of like your bread and butter as far as, you know, the, the clients that you're getting and all of that. Right. How is that, you know, come in, especially for the, the background that we're from, you know, mm. uh, Middle Eastern background and working with family. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you expect the cousin discount, right? So Cut. <laughs> the cousin discount. The cousin tax. Yeah, the cousin tax and discount. But it hasn't been too bad, actually. It's been, it's been pretty good. I feel like the people that have brought me into work for them trust my judgment. And me personally, like I just, you know, there's certain ways to, to be able to deal with quoting and, and providing a price of something that you know is comfortable for you, but also is not going to break their bank, mm -hmm. right? And you have to find that balance, I think, is what's important. Um, you know, a lot of companies mark up on material that, you know, they really don't do anything to procure it. You know, you order, it gets delivered, right? It doesn't cost you anything, right? It, half an hour of your time, you know, where that product and that material is still marked up to the client. So, they're paying that extra really for no extra benefit. It's the same material and it costs them, you know, X amount more. So I try to shy away from that. I don't, uh, I don't like to do that, the markup on products and stuff, right? My, my time is my, my bread and butter. Yeah. Right? My time and effort is where, you know, what I'm, what I'm expected to be compensated for and whatever I buy, you get that same price kind of thing. So, and that's, I think what's key to satisfying family and friends plus everybody else right so they know they're not getting ripped off on the other end right and that's what i think makes the difference between um you know my success so far and um and maybe people that didn't didn't do so well you know overpriced and you know over quoting is is mm -hmm. definitely hard especially this time uh day and age right is um, everything's tight you know inflation all that stuff so you guys been doing now general contracting for the last couple of years or so, because first it was just a little bit of renos and flips and, and this and that. Yeah. Uh, and then 2017, you said you started doing the, the flips Correct. and now general contracting yeah. for the last couple of years. What has been your focus under that umbrella? It, it's still both commercial residential very much. Like I've not 
shying to one or the other more than uh, more than one. But I do enjoy the commercial side. It's a little bit more flexible the timing. And when I say that, like, I mean, it's you're not working around someone's life, mm-hmm. right? When you're doing residential, especially if people are living in the house, you know, they want you in and out as quick as possible. I want to use my kitchen. Yeah, I want to use that bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, too much dust. You're making too much noise. You know what I mean? You can only work certain hours. And that's the, that's the big thing too, like the dust and like just being able to contain. It, it's probably like the, the your worst nightmare to working in a home when someone is living in it. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. You have to be extra cautious. You got to take the extra steps to contain everything in the one area. And especially if it's somewhere, you know, in a high traffic area, you know, a bathroom, master bathroom or something, you know what I mean? You're living in somebody's yeah. bedroom yeah. for a couple of weeks. Or, Question on that, actually, does it yeah. cost, like, do you guys think it might? Like, does it cost you more to work while somebody is living in the house? Does it, you know, is it extra work for you? It, there's a little bit of extra work. Like I said, containing the area you're working in so that you're not making a huge mess in the whole house. Time is is the more important thing, right? Time is money. So mm-hmm. we're in a, in a space where nobody's living in it, whether it's a residential or a commercial space that's not being used, you can go and work 12 hours. Correct. You know, for example, you can go and work on weekends, full days. Um, and not affect anybody. So you work a little bit more, but you can get the job done quicker. A lot quicker, yeah. Right. Whereas when you're working in a house that somebody's living in, it's, uh, you know, you can work the eight hours that they may not be home, for mm-hmm. example, right? And then you got to get out before the kids get home, and they get home and want to live their life, which is understandable. But uh, it's it's definitely a little bit tougher and, and a little bit harder to work around. But that's the name of the game. And as far as renovation business has been, for you guys for the last, let's say, three or four years. Did you notice any sort of difference from the pandemic to now to how is that affecting your business? I mean, the pandemic was was pretty crazy. I mean, a lot of people want to do a lot around their houses, but then you had the limitation of, oh, are you wearing a mask? Are you immunized? Are you, you know, so it definitely got the ball rolling on people who want to do projects that had been putting it on the back burner to actually make the move and, and do it, right? And, you know, they had their vacation money that they that they had yeah. put away that they could the use. The staycation. The staycation, right? So that definitely triggered a lot more people. Uh, as you saw, like material costs went through the roof. Uh, oh, yeah. Over over that time period. So it did it did definitely get the ball rolling and had people kind of rethink, okay, let's, let's plan to do this. Let's plan to finish our basement or, um, you know, add a bathroom or, or whatever it might be, renovate our kitchen. So... Uh, for sure, it was it was definitely a bump in, in the general contracting business, but um, it was a tough balance with the costs going up and uh, and then trying to work around the pandemic itself and all the tricky rules. What are some of the most interesting projects you've worked on lately? I'd say it would be my my last flip on Larkin would have been the most interesting, aside from the first one, which was a, a little bit of a learning curve. The second was more of a, you know, I've got this now and I'll go, but it was uh, a situation where friends of the people who bought the first house I flipped were over at a house swarming party and stuff. And the owner said, oh, yeah, you know, he's doing another one up the road. And while I'm working in the house one day, this couple comes in and then says, hey, you know, we're friends of so-and-so who bought your last house and we're, we're interested in um, and maybe figuring something out. So this is before I even, like I was in the gutting stage. So before I was planning to put up uh, for sale or anything like that. And so uh, we worked out uh, a deal to finish the house for them. Um, and whereas I'd never done anything like that before. It's very interesting. It's basically like you're almost getting paid before the job is even. Basically, yes. Yeah. You, you just started the job and someone is already interested. That's exactly. Amazing. Yeah. So they're really happy with, uh, with the work they did at the last house. And, and they said they, they want to get in early, right? Yeah. Which makes sense. And, um, and it has its benefits for sure to have someone come in and tell you, okay, I want it this way. Cause it saves you the headache of uh, having to plan and design, right? Yeah. Cause I was doing that all by myself. I didn't have a designer or anything like that. Right? And that's the thing. Like we say this quite often when it comes to like uh, real estate, like especially residential real estate. Like if you want something, if you want a house done as a resale, you want it to be exactly what you want. Well, you're going to have to either gut it all out and do it yourself exactly. or you go and you build your own custom home. Mm-hmm. So this kind of like, you know, got them yeah. midway through without necessarily having to, uh, yeah. to build their custom home in a way. Yeah, exactly that. And it's, it's tricky because when you're doing flips, you have to be very neutral in your finishes, right. your designs. Yeah, you can take something from, you know, what's, 
you know, uh, popular these days for for finishes and stuff like that. But otherwise, you have to be very, very neutral because you don't know what people like. Oh, I don't know, man. I feel like you're talking to my uh, stager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's always like, oh, it's just way too much. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, tone it down. Tone, tone it, it down. down. Yeah. Sometimes people go overboard and, and it, it just it makes it look too busy and, and it takes away from people's interests. So. So that's nice when someone comes in and says, you know what? No, I want this wall gray. I want, you know, yeah. this wall green. And, you know, I want to put uh, an accent wall here or whatever it may be. And I'll, I'll pick all the tiles and all that stuff. So, which makes it easier because then you don't have to worry about, you know, that part of it, of, of the design part. So that was one of, I'd say, interesting. Um, there was obviously some challenges about what they want, what you can do, what you can't do. Right. Uh, but in the end, it was a really cool learning experience to take something from nothing. And design it for somebody else versus yeah. doing it yourself. Yeah. I know just we're on the show. So for privacy, we're not going to talk about addresses or anything like that. But I'm very interested after the show to ask you where those addresses are. And just I look them I up myself for sure. You. I'll tell you. For it's, sure. Uh, it's always interesting. Like for me, it's like probably one of the most interesting things to see in real estate is like what they have done to the place. Yeah. You know, I get asked all the time, even like sometimes I'm not even their realtor. And they're like, hey, you want to come and see my house? Of course I want to see your house. Sure, yeah. I love seeing houses. Yeah. Like it's just, it's what we live for, you know, yeah, for sure. day, like if someone has done a great job, I want to go see it. Yeah. So one of the things that you said, which was very interesting and I want to kind of, you know, highlight it a little bit because it speaks volumes first to your character. It speaks volumes to your company. You said that the folks that bought the second home were the same or friends of the right. folks that bought the first home. To me, I just want to kind of frame it in a way that this is like the biggest compliment you can get, yeah. you know, Thank you. referral, yeah. like a hard referral saying like, Hey, this, this person loves your job, loves what you've done. And they're now looking at buying something. Can we refer them to you? Yeah. yeah. Like walking into job site while you're there. That's just fabulous. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely, it felt good. You know what it's I mean? A humbling especially, moment yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah. just, you know, at the very beginning of me trying to get into this, this scene, right? And so it was nice to have them come in and say, you know, we really liked what you did before. Yeah. Can we talk to you about it? So it definitely was a humbling moment, like it's you said. And I'm, the biggest compliment you can get. Yeah, referrals very are in our business, in yeah. your business, in my business. 100%. Literally the biggest compliment you can get yeah. from a client 100%. is when they're so comfortable. It's not just comfortable with the fact that you sold them a home or built a home for them or what yeah. have you, that they're now referring their best friends to you. Yeah. Yeah, that sure there's a level of trust, right? Exactly. That, that's there. That it's like I blindly trust <clears throat> this person. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. And Fatty, uh, you know, we've known each other on and off. You know, there, we've gone periods where we don't. Well, see you each went other. away. You went to uh, Calgary. I, did go I was away. busy building life. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. But uh, we've known each other for for some time now, probably since since the Lebanese festival back in '98. Man, that's the first time we met. I yeah, think 98, 99. It's probably been along, the, along those lines. Yeah. So close to 20. So this guy shows years. up and he goes, can I lead them? Like, yeah, of course, man, you go ahead, go lead the lineup. I don't care. I just want to dance. <laughs> it was a long it time, turns out man. he's one of the best depth Oh, no, 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 not anymore. No, my oh, knees, my got knees it, are bro. gone there. Brother. You still got it. You might yeah. not go up and down, but you still got yeah, it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in the blood, I think. You know, once you hear the music going, you can't stop. Uh, mm -hmm. but, so we, we've known each other for some time and, and I totally understand and, and appreciate that fact of that trust level. You know, when if you know somebody for so long and even though you don't see them for several years, when you see them again, it's like you haven't skipped a day. Exactly. Right? It's a, it's like we, our friendships just kind of went in a time capsule. And then we, exactly. Now it's back that, up. Yeah. And I think that speaks also to the level of trust as well. So, you know, in your, your, your line of business as well in real estate. For me personally, if I was going to refer somebody, it would be that type of person who I know I can trust because even though I don't see them for four or five years, and when I see them the next time, it's like we, we yeah. decide. So and it's very funny how we connected, right? Like yeah. we connected back again over real something estate. that we both do, yeah. you know, you're doing real estate flips, you're doing, you know, uh, renovations, all of that. And my client was the one that brought you in, who happens to be also a personal friend yeah. of yours and mine. Yeah. Yeah, small world. <laughs> Very small world. But this yeah, is Ottawa at the end of the day. Yeah, true. Like, you know, true. Everything's small in Ottawa. You know, they say normally there's like that six degree of separation. I feel like in Ottawa, it's like a two, maybe three max. If we're lucky, yeah. Degrees of separation. Like yeah. if, if you dig into anybody off the street, 
you're probably two two people away from them. That's yeah, it. not that's even true. Yeah, very true. Thank you. Thanks again, folks. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like, and we'll see you soon.